Good evening, everyone. Robin Shea here. Welcome to day 12. This is the evening message uh, before the fork, the 28 day experience. And what a fantastic day today has been. Uh, we just returned home from dinner out with wonderful friends and Rowdy was baptized in the creek tonight. And that was super special. Um, you know, family, friends, and uh, just the gospel spoken over my son. It was just really a very, very special night. And after that, we went out to eat. And um, hi, miss. So yeah, after that, we went out to eat. And uh, as we were eating in the restaurant and waiting for the restaurant, I started thinking about the message that I was going to talk to y'all about tonight. And then I went and reflected on the book and, and what would be an appropriate message for this phase of the journey. And in the previous class that I taught, the message on today is still really the best message for today. Because at this point, you're probably starting to feel some behaviors that are kind of starting to click. They're starting to fall into place. And I want to talk to you tonight about being an overconfident beginner. And I want, I want you to think about a child that is born, a child just like Keegan, my nephew, who is my sister's boy. Uh, Keegan was a, an incredibly gifted athlete, very gifted athlete. Um, the type of gifted athlete that could uh, easily switch from team to team to team, sport to sport to sport, and always excel because of natural talents. Uh, and what often happens with a child that is born with just innate natural ability, and they have the, the, um, the quick feet, the quick hands, the good eye and, and hand coordination. And let's say that because they're so good, they feel as if they don't have to practice the basics. They feel as if they can just skip to some of the advanced um, modalities within a sport because their, their basic moves are already there. They feel they have already mastered that. Well, what, what will often happen is let's take it into tennis because that's the one sport that I'm relatively okay at. If you don't have a good ground, hi Bernadette, a good ground game in tennis, meaning if you don't have the basic stroke, serve forward or forehand, backhand, serve forehand, backhand. Those are the strokes that you have to practice over and over and over again. Because in times of difficulty, that's what you're going to go back to. You're going to go back to the basics. Ah, Boogie just came in. So what often happens when you have someone with natural ability, they get away from the basics in lieu of more advanced techniques. Hi, Dina. And then when times get challenging, what, what you'll notice happen, let's say we have a child that isn't that great, that really has to work and cultivate. They have to stay with the groundwork and the basics. They have to be more repetitive to just get as good as the kid that's a natural born, born athlete. Just to be at their level, this other child has to work twice as hard and stay in the basics for what feels like twice as longer. Uh, well, what will happen is that as these children begin to develop, this child that didn't commit, that has great natural ability, but didn't commit the time to the groundwork, to the basic, drilling that home, drilling that home. Their talent was there, but the, the neurotransmitter, the connections were not repeated, repeated, repeated. They just had, they were just blessed with, with some ability. This child will stunt and this child will finally catch up to their level from sheer determination and work and grit. Now, because this child has, honey, I'm doing my video. Be right with you. Just because this child has the, the groundwork underneath them, has that solid foundation of the elementary steps. Now, this child starts excelling over the child that doesn't have the foundational work. Does that make sense to you? Um, it's just, it, it's just a basic, um, I guess dynamic that happens when you're born with a natural talent 
and you skip the groundwork because of that talent. Now, the reason that I bring it up in this part of the transformation process is because there may be some things that are seeming to, to come very natural to you. So you might start getting more complicated recipes. You might start challenging yourself to go out to dinner more. And what I want to do is I want to bring you back to the very basics. I want to bring you back to your ground game. I want you to realize, uh, for instance, this evening when we went out to eat, I already knew what I wanted to eat before we got there. I already knew. Um, it's a restaurant that I go to often. It's a restaurant that I know the menu, but I go back to my, I go to my basics. I go to my toolbox because over 15 years I've cultivated tools that work for me and they're in that toolbox and I never hesitate to grab a tool out when I need it. So my groundwork is there. My basics are there. I'll tell you something else. I have a trigger and of course, you know, triggers are uh, something that we always need to be aware of and pain is one of my, my greatest triggers. So when I have any menstrual discomfort or a splitting migraine, anything that just really has me not feeling well, um, my first go-to is, is food to numb the pain. As long as I'm eating something, I'm not feeling the level of pain that I might be feeling, whether it's a migraine or any type of menstrual discomfort, which are my, my two main ones that would derail me. So I have to be highly conscious of those two triggers because they will derail me faster than anything else. Uh, so don't be an overconfident beginner. Be committed to your ground game. Be committed to the labels. Be committed to your snack tower. Be committed to um, uh, the multiple grocery store trips uh, every, you know, a couple times a week so that you're not overloaded. Um, th the meal prep. Don't leave anything to chance. Make sure that you're playing your ground game right now as best you can. Never assume because, let's see, we're day 12. A neurotransmitter, a synaptic connection does not take place in 12 days. It, it's fledgling, meaning that, that they're there, the connection is, is there, but it's weak and it's distorted and it doesn't have enough glue to bind it and hold it down. So right now it's, there's a lot of wiggle room in those new synaptic connections of, of the new habits that you're wanting to wire into place. So if you abandon the basic principles, you're never going to solidify that synaptic connection. And that's what it's going to take to loosen the connections that aren't serving you and strengthen the connections that you've chosen to replace. And you have to remember, we do not stop habits. We do not end habits. We replace habits. Okay. So once a synaptic connection is there, it is always there. It can be weaker or stronger depending on the attention that it's being given. And that's the point right there. You have, you have certain habits in your life that do not serve you. They haven't served you. They don't represent your desired self. They don't line up with who you want to be. And those synaptic connections are in place. Okay. The neural pathways are deep and they're rutted and they're in place. And so what you're wanting to do, the new behavior is going to be right beside that old behavior. And you're stealing glue from the old behavior and you're plugging it in to the new behavior. That's the neural growth factor. We've talked a little bit about this. I know this is getting a little neurosciencey, but I want you to understand that I want you to remain a beginner because you need to steal as much glue from that old habit as you possibly can and reinforce that new habit and complete and total saturation in the process is what's going to really help that um, come into fruition and that come to come to pass in your mind, in your brain. So from a chemical standpoint, you need to think of yourself as a beginner, protect your environment, a synaptic connection can be at the end of our four phases, by the end of the 28th day, you're going to have a good 
um, start on some new synaptic connections. But over the, over the course of time, those always have to be reinforced because you have that greedy little habit sitting right next door to the new habit. And that's a greedy habit with deep ruts. It's like the Oregon Trail. Greg and I were driving over the Oregon Trail in a, in a plane one time and we were looking out the window and you could see the ruts in the earth where the wagons were. I mean, and how long ago is that? You know, hundred some odd years ago. And you could, we could look out the window and see these ruts. So think of your wheel. Think of, uh, of your wheel of a bicycle maybe. You know, have you ever caught an edge on the road and you feel your bike being pulled because of the rut? That's what's going on up here. You have these the super highway of your mind trying to new, make new connections, but if you're not careful and you're not conscientious, your wheel is going to be pulled right back into that old rut. That's how elementary it is. That I mean, if you can think of it in those terms. So you have these greedy, stingy little habits that you're trying to uh, lessen their strength. So you're stealing this neural growth factor and you're plugging it into the new uh, synaptic connection. But if you're not careful and you're not conscientious and you think um, that you are more on top of this than you actually are, then these greedy habits are going to grab that glue right back and reinforce the old behaviors. So uh, from a very baseline, you know, looking at being a beginner as a child, um, not committing to the practice of the elements and the fundamentals, the basics over and over and over. You've heard coaches talk to children about this forever. I, I did, you know, 500 three foot, what do they call them? Free throws a day. Or I did, you know, batting practice for two hours in a certain, one certain way, because that practice is the foundation for the other practices that are going to build on top of it. So don't get overconfident. Uh, take pride in everything that you're doing right, but just don't get overconfident and always bring it back to the simplest form of what you're doing. Uh, five ingredient rule, uh, two uh, of your cheat meals a week um, or one or the 20% the daily, whichever you have decided to, to do. But just remember that right now you're very vulnerable. So don't get overconfident. Commit to being that beginner. Stay in a beginner's mindset where you're practicing the basics. You're building tools every day. Never get so big for your britches that you're not filling out your journal pages in the morning and at night. Do your journal work. Okay? Stay a beginner. And by the end of the program, the last days, you'll realize what has stuck. You'll feel those neural connections stronger and deeper because you cared for them right now, which is the absolute most important time that you can care for them. So that's all I'm going to say for tonight. I am going to post up a picture of Rowdy uh, just because I do want to share that with y'all. It was a, it was a wonderful night and uh, so proud of my boy. So you guys have a wonderful night. I love seeing you all on here on Sunday night. Hi, Teresa. Hi, Deborah. Hi, Dina, Bernadette, Melissa. Um, I will be back with you tomorrow morning with another message. But until then, know that I'm going to go to bed tonight praying for you and pray for your success. And uh, you guys are a bright, bright part of my day, both morning and evening. So thanks for being with me. And I will see you tomorrow. Bye now. <laughs>